Hi everyone. Um, just a little update on my terrarium project. In a previous video, uh, in a mail opening video, I mentioned that I was going to start a terrarium. I got the jar. I got the aquarium gravel, which I put into the jar too early. Um, it needs to be cleaned. Um, it says I cut this instructions out off the bag, a small bag of aquarium gravel, that's all that was in it. I bought it at Pet Circus in the aquarium section, of course. <clears throat> Just regular aquarium gravel, I got black. I wanted natural color rocks, natural rocks, looking rocks, um, but they didn't have any. So I went with black instead of like neon pink. This is the instructions I cut out from the bag. Never use soap or detergent when filling your tank with water or, or a terrarium. Place a saucer on, place a saucer on the gravel and pour water over the saucer. This will prevent the water from disrupting your setup. Oh, I see. That's if you don't want the stones to scatter around. Um, you want them where they're placed. You put a saucer over them uh, when you're pouring the water into your aquarium. But I don't have to worry about that. It's, this is a little bit of a different scenario. Uh, but it's good to have the instructions. Pour gravel into a colander. I have one of those here. And rinse with water to remove any debris caused during transport. Okay, I'm going to do that in a second. Um, right now I'm going to show you uh, the other items I got. Okay, so here I, I have some rocks that I might put in my terrarium. I have to narrow down which rocks I'm going to use. Um, these are just rocks that uh, either I picked up or my parents picked up on trips. This one's a nice white rock. It's rather large though. This one has some interesting patterns on it. This also has a little sparkle to it, like it's got, um, I don't know, I don't think you could pick that up on the camera. Almost as if it has quartz in it. See that. Here's a long one that I figure this might go in there, but I can figure I can set upright so that it doesn't take up as much room in the jar. And the last one is similar to the other one except it's white and black dots. I also have these little dinosaurs. My hair's sticking up. Yeah, so I have these little dinosaurs that I'm going to add to the terrarium just for fun. This is an experiment, by the way. Um, I looked online for how to make a terrarium and I found some neat uh, YouTube videos. I found some neat YouTube videos on how to do it um, to get the uh, water cycle going. You need the, this gravel in the bottom to hold the, the water uh, so that it you have a you have enough water that it uh, condenses and keeps the keeps the cycle going. There's the other dinosaur that I'm going to put in there. Maybe if there's enough room, um, I'm not sure. Uh, with all the rocks and everything and all the plants that I'm going to add to this. I'm going to add soil and uh, maybe a, a little piece of uh, like rotting wood that I find in the woods and some moss, and some small plants, and some mud, and some dry soil. And hopefully some creatures will come out of the, uh, the soil and I'll, I'll discover uh, little creatures um, as this thing goes. That's what I kind of find fun about it. Uh, so I have this colander to use to clean the um, 
Leave the gravel. And I couldn't find long tweezers to add the plants in, so I found this back scratcher that I've never used. And I figure I can use that to. Um, I need help uh, arranging things or or pushing the plants into the soil. I can use this. Um, another thing that I found was this. I'm so happy I found this. In the YouTube video I watched, I will give a link to the, the YouTube video that I'm using as a guide. The guy's really good at making terrariums, especially closed terrariums. Um, so I got this uh, activated carbon from the pet care section at Walmart and it was only $6 activated carbon. You're supposed to use it for aquariums. It was in the aquarium part of the pet care section at Walmart. To find the pet care section at Walmart, just look for the big huge bags of dog food uh, on their shelves and you'll find the pet care section. And in there, there'll be a shelf with aquarium supplies. And if you want to make a terrarium, probably going to want a layer of this in your enclosed uh, terrarium so that it um, filters the water and cleans the water as it cycles. So I found that. That was great. Um, I'll be making more videos about this terrarium as I go. Uh, when I put it together I'll do a video of that when I find when I go out to find the plants and uh, the samples of soil and mud that I'm going to put in here. Um, I'll make a video of all that as well. And, uh, I'm going to go over the different layers that I put into that. Uh, but this is basically just an update of, uh, yeah, I've gone a little further with the terrarium here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just clean, I'm just going to rinse the, the jar and this um, this gravel because it's supposed to be clean before I add it and then I can re-add it. I'll let it dry and then I'll re-add it into the So we'll just put it into our colander. And just put the lid on it so I can get a better grip on this. my gravel layer is big enough, I don't know. So now we will, I'll take the camera over here and we will rinse, we will rinse our gravel. The instructions say you're not supposed to use soap because it's not it won't it won't be good for the uh, the life forms that are going to be living in your terrarium. So I'll shake that a bit too. Get all the surfaces. So you don't want to use soap. I see there's a bar of soap there. Don't want to use that. Oh, I think. So I think that that's rinse. Just shake a bit of the water up. <clears throat> then we have to let this dry a bit, I think. This gets rid of some of the debris, I guess, that uh, we can get when we buy this. So, so I'm just going to set that in my drying rack, and when it dries, I'll, I'll put it, and when it dries, I'll put it back into the uh, terrarium. Uh, but for now, that's the update for my terrarium, and I'll just put another update here on the 
some games that I was uh, opening up and showing in my uh, last mail video. Uh, I figured out how to work one of the games. And the other game is a, is a fail. I should have never bought it because uh, it's not what I thought it was. Anyways, that update will be right now. Hi everybody, I'm Steve and this is the continuation of my update video and my opening mail video. With the last section of this video, I explained that I figured out that Star Wars game that I showed you in my previous mailbox video. So let's have a look at uh, that game. First I had this game, which is Quiz Quiz. Quiz Whiz, actually. I got that backwards. Empire Strikes Back and Star Wars. Now, I think I explained that I was disappointed in this product because I thought that this machine talked to you. I thought that it read out the trivia questions and gave you multiple choices with an electronic voice recording. And maybe even had some sound effects in there. But as far as I know, it doesn't have any of that. But well, let's let's see for sure. Let's get some batteries in here. This is where the cartridge goes. I've got Star Wars Trilogy in there. And here's where the battery compartment is. Oh, it's already got batteries. I already put them in there. From briefly trying it out before. All right, here's the machine. Uh, start. Okay. Now, what's the instructions here? What do I do? Enter the number of the question you want to answer using the number keys. Okay. So where's the question I want to answer? Let's do... What color is Luke's lightsaber? Alright. So enter the number. We will enter six. Okay. Now what? Enter. Oh, what? Okay. Maybe I don't get this. Uh, I didn't read all the instructions yet. Uh. Enter your answer choice using the alpha keys and then press enter. Oh, okay. So six, what was my answer? What color is Luke's lightsaber? I think it's uh, green, isn't it? So let's pick green and enter. So what's the right answer? Doesn't give me the right answer? I don't know what color it is. I'm not a Star Wars fanatic. Oh wait, it's on the front here. Where's his lightsaber? It's not turned on. Okay, let's try the next question by pressing next. What is it that the rebel forces hope to restore? A, Princess Leia's father to his throne. B, freedom to the galaxy. C, order to the galaxy, or D, the democratic powers of the Imperial Senate. Uh, maybe C? Man, I really don't know anything about Star Wars. So let's try seven. C. Wrong. And it doesn't tell you the right answer. See, that's, that's why I didn't like this. The old version, the actually, actually the older version of this, had better technology than this newer version because it would give you sound effects, it would give you more talking, it would read the question out for you. What is the name of the craft Luke flies while at home with his aunt and uncle? Well, that's an easy one. It's a land speeder. Well, I got one right. Well, I'm not happy with this product, so I'll probably sell it at a yard sale.
Now, this product I am happy with, and I figured out how to use it. It didn't take me long after fiddling around with it. I realized it was pretty easy to figure out. It's a memory type game. You have to remember where the sound effects are coming from. So we turn it on and then we press start. Oh, we need batteries. All right, so let's get some batteries in here. I'm gonna use the uh, rechargeable ones. Start the game here. Let's turn it this way. Alright. Start. Now it's like, do I have it set for single? Oh, I want single. Start. When you're a single player, you're, you go first. And I think I press this. You rebel scum. You rebel scum. So I have to find the you rebel scum button just randomly. Since I don't know any yet, I'll just, I'll pick a corner. <laughs> that wasn't it. So now the computer goes. And he didn't get uh, the Chewbacca noise. He got a, he got um, R2-D2 screaming. So now it's my turn. Do I have to press this again? Or, yes. Uh, I'll choose another. It's a trap. Nope. So he used to find that sound, and he got yub nub. This is madness. This is madness. So you kind of have to remember where the sounds are. I can't shake it. Wars not make one great. Oh, he had that one. Where did he press? Here? No. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. There's Chewbacca. Let the Wookiee win. Let the Wookiee win. Let the Wookiee win. Ah, I got one. So that remains lit. And you have to get four in a row. And it's my turn again because I got one right. You rebel scum. You rebel scum. I do not remember. Buddha, Buddha solo. Watch it, you've got one on your tail. My, it's a trap. Uh, see, uh, my memory is really bad. I don't remember where anything is now. I can't shake it. I can't shake it. I'll try and remember that. Ah, that was there. Yubnub was there. Chewy is here. I have both. I have foreseen it. I have foreseen it. Oh, lucky guess. You rebel scum. I don't know. These aren't the droids you're looking for. <laughs> this is madness. I can't shake it. That was it. You go. rebel scum. These aren't the droids you're looking for. I keep pushing the same <laughs> button. Oh, great. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You rebel scum. I can't shake it! I can't shake it! I only have one more to go and I get four. Oh, I get to go again. That's this one. Again. Yep, yep. Could have won. Uh, it's a trap. I I don't know anymore. See, <laughs> terrible memory. I think that's the no. Watch it! You've got one on your tail. 
lives you're looking for. This is madness. This is madness. You know what? I my memory is so bad. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. Watch it's it, the you've corner. got one on your tail. Watch it, you've got one on your tail. <laughs> Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> he got to go twice. Wars not make one great. Wars not make one great. Wars not make one great. I won. <laughs> That was lucky that I was won, that I won, because I was doing terrible there. So you can see this is a pretty good game. Pretty fun. That was a good uh, purchase on eBay. Oh, what's happening here? My camera seems to be unstable. Maybe I need something to make it more stable. Well, let's check into what I got in the mail. See if I, if I have something in there that'll help my camera stay more stable. Man, oh, I need I need some stability here. This is crazy. All right, so I got my package here, and I got look at this. I got a new um, a new mini tripod for my camera. How convenient. This is by Lensgo. Yeah, that's what that says. Lensgo. I was looking for a, a cheap one. This was around $14. My other one was, was in my backpack and I accidentally sat on my backpack and broke my other one and I thought oh I could glue it together but I think it would keep breaking once there's a crack in something that needs to be sturdy like this um, it's bound to just keep breaking it's bound to keep breaking in the weak spot so I figured I should get just get a new new one and this uh, can be used for a camera or a smartphone and I use a smartphone to do my filming and this has a spring on it um, I'll show you on my other camera let's see if it just works yeah, yeah see it holds it like that and you can adjust um, it forward. Oh yeah, like that. So I can have it aimed at myself like that. You can put it at different angles. You can also fold this up and carry it around and aim it at things. So now I will put my smartphone on it and uh, give myself some stability here. I have it rested on another box right now. There we go, the camera's on a tripod now. That's much better. Let's see what else we got in this box. Oh. A magnifying glass with a light for reading. Oh. I got a, I bought myself a video cassette cleaner, head cleaner device. I'm not sure how well these work, but I was having some problems with my VCR. I'm trying to transfer a whole bunch of videotapes because they're taking a whole bunch of room up. I'm gonna just transfer them and make uh, digital files of them. A lot of the commercials, old TV commercials and stuff, I'm going to put up on my alternate channel, uh, Debibulated channel. I'll put a, a card up in the corner here uh, on my channel, or maybe it's so you can check out those old commercials when I transfer them to videotape. Oh, I got more uh, batteries. On my charger. I got another stylus pen 
to make art on my tablet, laptop, and my also my phone. And I got really long tweezers for my terrarium project that I'm gonna start on, uh, that I'm gonna continue on in the spring. Um, I haven't, I mean, I have all the supplies for it. I just need, uh, I just need to get the soil and the plants going. And that's more of a spring project. So that'll be an upcoming video. These are made out of bamboo. They're about $10 on Amazon. They need it to be long so I can reach down and adjust, uh, you know, putting plants in the soil, making sure they're embedded in the soil. So that's an upcoming uh, video in the spring. This is from the Exoterra company where you can make terrariums for or animals like lizards. Um, I also got new speakers for my TV, and they ended up. I, I opened this already. Got this in the mail, and they work really good. They've got this little device here that makes it easy for me to adjust the the volume. I just have that sticking out under my TV, and I just roll my finger along the uh, toggle there to adjust the volume. It's got two speakers and a subwoofer and they sound really nice. They're uh, among the cheaper speakers available um, but they seem to work okay from Logitech. So I, I kind of recommend these if you're looking for cheap speakers to make your TV sound a little bit better. And this I got from my sister but we'll get into that in a sec. First, I wanted to do a little review of this drink that I found. You've probably seen it yourself, but it's the first time I saw it yesterday. It's Coca-Cola's new Starlight drink. It's like some kind of space drink. You can see it's got like little sparkles in the logo there. I don't know if you can see that. The design on the label has like little stars, like the galaxy. This is the zero sugar version because I'm diabetic. So Starlight, it has a bit of a, I don't know if you can see that, it has a bit of a red color to it. Yeah, so I thought this was interesting. I don't know what this is all about. So I looked it up online here and it says, Coca-Cola launches new Starlight flavor and it tastes like space candy. That sounds good to me. Space candy. Let's look up some more info here. The internet is baffled by Coca-Cola's new Starlight flavor. Few have traveled to outer space, but many wonder about the expansive last frontier. Billionaires build rocket ships to get a small glimpse of the Earth at a different angle. Humankind has spent its existence staring into the starry night sky in awe fascinated by the thought of perhaps one day living on another planet or terrified of the great unknown. Coca-Cola has taken a small step for mankind, introducing a new beverage, Coca-Cola Starlight, whose flavor is as mysterious as the cosmos. According to Eater, which is I guess some website, food website, astronomers discovered a dust cloud in the Milky Way made up of ethyl formate the same chemical that gives raspberries their flavor. It also smells of rum. This led people to wonder what space might taste like. And Coca-Cola aims to answer that question with its new red tinted drink, inspired by space. The beverage giant describes Coca-Cola Starlight as having notes reminiscing of stargazing around a campfire and a refreshing taste that evokes a feeling of a cold journey in space, which cleared up nothing since nobody has ever tasted any of that word cocktail. <laughs> Some people have said it tastes like raspberry mint. When Coke hinted at starlight tasting like a campfire, 
Redditors wondered if it tastes like s'mores, with one suggesting it tastes like Teddy Grahams and cola. One person tweeted that it tastes like caramel plum, and the feeling you get when you inhale <laughs> really cold air. Tastes like Coke, but has an aftertaste of cereal milk. These are widely diverse re uh, res responses. Notes of co cotton candy. <laughs> One Redditor commented, it tastes like floor. Clearly not everyone is a fan of the mysterious new drink. There have also been conflicting reports of mint flavor and cinnamon spice. <laughs> Alright, enough reading about it. Let's open this up and see what it... Well, we'll see first what it smells like. Smells like caramel. Smells like a delicious, it smells like uh, apple caramel. Yeah, you know those craft caramel squares? It smells like that. Definitely. So let's, I got some ice in here. Let's try this. See what the color is. It's sort of a pinkish. So let's hold it up here and See, now I smell more fruit. First impressions. Tastes like a cola. And I definitely taste like a marshmallowy caramel. And most of that's coming from the smell. It has a really nice smell. I don't taste raspberry, I don't taste fruit. I smelled it for a second there, but mostly caramel, marshmallow. I really like this. I, uh, mostly I like the smell. It reminds me of those little crap squares, soft caramel squares that you melt and you put on caramel apples. I give this a thumbs up. I'm glad they have a, a zero sugar version. The most different thing about it is the color and the smell. The taste is Pepsi with a little bit of something different in it. I like the color too. It feels, it feels like, like I'm, I'm in space. space. So next I'm going to open up a gift that I got from my sister from this past Christmas. I haven't had a chance to open it. It's a matcha tea bowl set. I like matcha tea flavor and I like to relax with a hot matcha latte sometimes and getting it from the store can be expensive. And making it at home can be uh, maybe uh, like a relaxing thing I can do. So let's see what we got here. We've got a package of matcha tea. 
42.5 grams matcha tea I really like matcha tea powder it's very good we've got we've got a, a thing to scoop the tea that's neat made out of bamboo we've got a coaster made out of wood We've got the thing to stir it, stir it in. Are you happy with your purchase? We have the tea bowl. It's very nice. And um, what's this? What do you use that for? Not sure yet. All right, so we got the instructions here. How to use your new bowl. Preheat your matcha bowl by filling it up with some hot water. Okay, I'll do that. Once the bowl is warm, remove the water and wipe dry. Okay, I'll be back. All right, I heated the bowl and it's dried off. It's uh, warm to the touch. I heated it with the uh, water. That's actually what I do when I prepare a regular orange pico tea too, is that I I, uh, I make sure the uh, teapot is, or teacup, are, are warm before making it because it affects, seems to affect the flavor, makes it better. Ensure the bowl is completely dry or your matcha powder may be lumpy and difficult to whisk later. Is it completely dry? I think so. That's just glaze. Using the bamboo scoop, place about three grams of matcha powder into the bowl. The amount of matcha powder can be adjusted based on your preference. Then pour about 50 milliliters of hot water into your bowl. I'm actually going to use oat milk because I want to make a latte. <laughs> 50 milliliters. Okay. And, and whisk it with the whisk. When whisking, refrain from moving your arm. The whisking motion could, should come from the wrist. A light green foam should form at the top of your matcha tea. Okay. Alright, so I will do that next. I found out what this piece of ceramic is all about. It's a little stand for the whisk. That's pretty neat. Thought of everything. So, mmm, this oat milk smells good. I got, I heated up some oat milk. I wanted a latte, so I'm using uh, oat milk instead of water. So let's open up this matcha. Stir until frothy, it says. Product of Japan. There's a little map of Japan on there. It's pretty neat. This is the Tiesta Tea Company. And it has a seal on it. Alright, so where's my little bamboo scooper? Oh. I love the smell of matcha. It smells healthy. It smells green. <laughs> I love it. it. Smells green. Smells tasty. Um, how much did it say? Five grams? I don't even know how much that is. I'm just going to do it till, you know, whatever. Let's do one more. It smells so good. I want the full effect. This uh, has a seal on it. Keep it fresh. It smells so good. I'll get a shot of that in the uh, bowl here. There we go. 
There's the green matcha. Let's do it this way. Maybe I'll pour a bit and stir. Use the wrist, it said. Use the wrist. A bit more milk. Let's fill the bowl. Oh, careful. Doesn't seem to be getting frothy. Is it getting frothy yet, folks? No, oh, I don't think so. Maybe it doesn't get frothy when you use oat milk. I actually like this experience. It's um, relaxing. And the smell of it is relaxing, too. I really like green tea a lot. Matcha. Matcha is very good. Have you ever had matcha tea ice cream? Sometimes you get that at all you can eat sushi places. It's so tasty. Maybe it's not going to get frothy. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Do you spin it? Maybe it's due to me using oat milk instead of water. Or maybe I don't have enough green tea in there. Powder. I think I do though. It's very it's very green looking. I think I'm gonna stop sim because I don't think it's gonna get <laughs> Very strong. Not what I'm used to. So maybe I, I need to put in a little bit less uh, matcha next time. A little bit goes a long way, I guess. Mm. Definitely has that nice matcha taste. Earthy and leafy and green, healthy tasting. Mm. Cheers, everyone. Kampai, is that what you say? <laughs> I don't think that goes for tea. I think that's more with alcoholic beverages. Hmm. Nice experience. 
I like it. Maybe, maybe try some matcha tea sometime. I know I like it. Not everybody has the same taste though, and that's okay. Thanks for joining me here at Steve's World of Wonders. I hope you enjoyed this opening mail and uh, update video. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too tedious and boring. Thanks for joining me here at Steve's World of Wonders. Bye for now. Cheers. Hmm. Ha 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 